Welcome back everyone. Today we will be talking about hope. Why should we have hope when times get really hard in our lives? Where does hope even come from? Is hope something that God even wants us to have? If you've ever wondered some of these questions, I hope today's video gives you some answers. We will be taking a look at the Quran to see what Islam says about hope. And we will be taking a look at the Bible to see what Christianity says about hope. We're going to start with the Bible and spend a little bit of time in the book of Psalms. This is Psalm chapter 71, verse 14. It says, As for me, I will always have hope. I will praise you more and more. This verse tells us that hope is something that we can always have. But what are we supposed to put our hope in? To answer that, we're going to look to Psalm chapter 33, verse 22, which says, Let your steadfast love, O Lord, be upon us, even as we hope in you. This verse shows us where we're supposed to put our hope. We are supposed to put our hope in the Lord, not in our circumstances, not in our situation, not in other people, not even in ourselves. Our hope is supposed to be in the Lord. Psalm 130 verse 5 says, I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and in his word I hope. This verse tells us that we can hope in his word. And Matthew chapter 24 verse 35 tells us that his word, the Bible, this word that he's given us, these words will never pass away. Moving on to the book of Isaiah chapter 40 verse 31, which says, But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. When we hope in the Lord, our strength is renewed. Our strength comes from God. Not only that, but he is our strength. Romans chapter 15 verse 13 says, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace and believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. This verse tells us a lot of things. First of all, we can have hope because of the Holy Spirit. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, we are able to hope. So this verse tells us once again that we have the ability to hope because of God. God gives us the ability to hope. Notice that this verse doesn't just tell us to have hope. It tells us to abound in hope. And to help you guys out, I looked up the definition of the word abound, and it means to exist in large amounts. So God doesn't just want us to have a little bit of hope. He wants us to have a lot of hope. To finish up our time in the Bible, I'm going to end with the book of Jeremiah, chapter 29, verse 11. It's a very famous verse, but I have to put it in. It says, For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans for good and not for evil, plans to give you a future and a hope. His plans are to give us hope. Hope is literally written into his plan for our lives. Hope is a gift that comes from God. So what have we learned from the verses today? We have learned that hope comes from God. It is a gift from him. We have learned that we can have hope at all times because he is faithful. We have learned that he does not just want us to have hope, but he wants us to abound in hope. We've learned that hoping in God gives us strength. And the final most important thing we've learned is that our hope is meant to be in God, not in our circumstances. So now we are going to switch gears a little bit and open up the Quran to see what Islam has to say about hope. We are going to start in chapter 2, verse 286. It reads, God does not charge a soul with more than it can bear. I'm going to pause there before continuing the rest of the verse because this portion of the verse is something that I hear Muslims quote all the time when they try to think of inspirational verses or verses that give comfort. Um, but that is just the beginning of the verse and we are going to read the whole verse. Let's continue. God does not charge a soul with more than it can bear. It shall be requited for whatever good and whatever evil it has done. They pray, our Lord, do not take us to task if we forget or make a mistake. Our Lord, do not place on us a burden like the one you placed on those before us. Our Lord, do not place on us a burden we have not the strength to bear. Pardon us and forgive us and have mercy on us. 
Now, just from reading what the verse says, to me, this does not really seem like a verse which speaks about hope. In this verse, the people are crying. They're begging to God not to give them a burden that they can't bear, to forgive them for any mistakes or errors they might make. Even this verse, which claims to be about hope, is actually still laced with fear. Moving on to chapter 3, verse 139, which reads, And do not become faint of heart, nor grieve. You will have the upper hand if you are believers. So while this verse doesn't specifically say the word hope, it does say that as long as we don't become faint of heart, and if we continue on in the faith, we will have the upper hand. But let's continue reading the context around this verse. Verse 140 says, If you have suffered a wound, they too have suffered a similar wound. We bring these days to men by turns, so that God may know those who believe and choose witnesses from among you, and God does not love the unjust. Verse 141 says, So that God may purge those who believe and wipe out those who deny the truth. That does not sound very hopeful to me. We are going to end with chapter 7, verse 55. It reads, Call on your Lord with humility and in secret. He does not love the transgressors. So once again, another group that God does not love. Verse 56 says, Do not spread corruption on the earth after it has been set in order. Pray to him with fear and hope. God's mercy is close to those who do good. So his mercy is not close to everyone. Islam claims that his mercy is only close to those who do good. I also just want to reread one part of this verse again. In verse 56, it says, pray to him with fear and hope. Now, in the Bible, it uses the word fear quite a bit to describe a reverence and an awe and a deep respect towards God. So to give this text the benefit of the doubt, I looked up the Arabic word for fear here to see if it was talking about the same type of fear, and it is not. The word for fear here means deeply afraid, scared, and terrified. So in this verse, it is linking fear and hope together. If you are a Muslim who's watching this, I just want to say that God loves you so much. He desires to have a relationship with you. He desires to give you a hope that's found in him. And so to end this video, I'm going to read two verses. The first is 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20. It says, For all the promises of God find their yes in him. Every single promise that God has given us in this book is faithful and true, and they find their yes in him. The second verse I want to leave you with is 1 John 4.18, which says, There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear. In God, there is no fear. There is no condemnation in Christ. If you are in him, you are a new creation. And I just want to leave you with those thoughts. And I'm going to be linking the Bible and the Quran in the description below. And I just really encourage you guys to take a look at these texts for yourself.